Hi, in today's video, I'll show you how to analyze the narrative perspective in, for example, a novel or a short story. How do you find out what kind of narrator it is? How do you find out what kind of specific aspects are interesting about this narrator here in the text you're analyzing? And then how do you turn that into a nice text, into a nice written analysis? Let's go. English with Mr. B. So I would suggest you follow these three steps to write your analysis. First of all, of course, identify the narrative perspective you've got in this text here and understand what does this specific narrative perspective do to this very text. And I think this is diff different from step one and very important. Third, of course, write your analysis and I'll show you how to construct a good paragraph there. Let's go. First of all, an overview. I'll describe the narrative perspectives in more detail, but just a little overview to see what's coming. We've got the first person narrator, third person limited narrator, and the third person unlimited or omniscient narrator. And these terms, I think, are really important to keep in mind. We've got the author. The author is the person who writes, for example, a novel. And this author comes up with a narrator who then tells the story. And sometimes this narrator can be a character. So characters are sort of the people in inhabiting the world of the novel or the short story. Let's take a look at a first person narrator. A first person is called first person narrator because uh, the first person singular pronouns are used. So I, me, my, etc. And the character is the narrator at the same time. So a character in the novel is telling us the story. And this means we can only know what this character knows. We can only see what he sees, etc. Um, and can only feel uh, what he feels, etc. Because of the description. And I like to compare that with camera perspectives. And if you look at this um, illustration here, the, the camera perspective is basically uh, as if somebody's holding the camera at eye level and where your, the eyes are the camera lens and the ears are the microphone. So we can only have access to what this camera perspective would see or hear and of course to the thoughts of the character. But we cannot leave this perspective. We cannot have an outside perspective on this character or anything else in the world of the novel. Then there's the third person limited narrator. Third person because of course third person singular pronouns are used. He, she, his, etc. And here we have a narrator who picks a character to tell the story. And again, this is a single character, but this character does not appear as I, but as he or she. So in a way, it's very similar to the first person narrator, but there can be more distance. And again, the comparison to camera perspectives, this I think you can imagine as a camera that is usually held very closely and really focused on one character. And still, we only know what this character sees, feels, hears, etc. But there could be a bit more distance. It's more of an outside view or can be with more distance as opposed to the first person narrator. Then we've got the third person unlimited or omniscient narrator. Here again, third person, so third person pronouns are used. And now this narrator knows a lot more. This narrator knows things that a single character cannot know. This narrator could know what's going to happen soon or what has happened before, um, or could know about things that none of the characters know about. Uh, and here the, the, the picture again is supposed to show that the camera can create a lot of distance and have like a bird's eye view. And the narrator could know here in this example that uh, there's a person standing behind the tree, something the lady does not see at this point. And the narrator could also zoom in on individual characters and then we would find out what they're thinking. So this narrator is unlimited, so not limited in what they have access to and omniscient, which means knowing everything. And so this narrator knows everything that there is to know in this fictional world, which doesn't mean that he necessarily all the time shares this with us, but he can. Yeah, so it's a very flexible kind of narrator and that's not limited to one of the characters. Again, a little overview with some comparisons because there are some similarities. First person narrator is basically like a third person limited narrator because we only have access to one character, right? So these are strong similarities. And of course, the two third person narrators are both third person narrators and they're both pick a character or can pick a character in the case of the unlimited omniscient, of course, several characters to appear. 
Now, it's important and really important to understand um, the effect of your narrative perspective and the text you're dealing with. And some questions might help you with that. For example, how would a different perspective change how you experience the story? Say we have a story about a classroom setting and we're following uh, the teacher so we know what he sees, feels, etc. How would it be different if you had the perspective of a student? Obviously, a lot would change. And along with these questions, there are these two questions to consider. What do you know only because of this perspective? For example, what's going through the teacher's head, how he's evaluating the students? And what would you not know from a different perspective? So, of course, from a student's perspective, we would not know what's going through the teacher's head. But if it was the other way around, we also wouldn't know what's, what's going through the teacher's head if we are in a student's perfect perspective. So the perspective that the author has the narrator has chosen for the narrator always sort of changes the story. And of course, this is done intentionally to create an effect. Some aspects uh, I think also help to consider some questions you can ask yourself. Does the narrative perspective create a lot of distance? So are we far away or are we really close zooming in on one person? In this case, we often tend to identify with this character. And what kind of social perspective have we got? Are we the king or are we following the king or are we following the beggar? And um, physically, where is this person located? So if it's, let's say, a big event, is it somebody on stage or is it somebody watching from the back? This would change your perspective. Is it more an observer character um, in a first person narration, for example, who only sees what's happening but is not really involved? Or is it the protagonist, the person that really drives the story? Do we have a lot of changes in perspective? In modern novels, often uh, you have different chapters that are from the perspective of different characters. So will we have different third person limited narrators in different chapters? Also, a narrator can be reliable so that we think, okay, what this narrator is telling us sounds logical, makes sense, or unreliable, so that we doubt that uh, the narrator is coming to the right conclusions. And maybe, for example, also is uh, stupid or drunk or whatever. Then, of course, you need to write your analysis. I've used the example here of Harry Potter because I think lots of people will be familiar with the novels and or the films and can relate to it. Of course, you should name the narrative perspective that you've got here. So like this, J.K. Rowling uses a third-person omniscient narrator to portray Harry and his environment. Then, and this is really important, describe the specific effects of this narrative perspective here. So not in general, third-person omniscient narrators often have the effect of etc. But here, in this novel. And use quotes or references to prove your points. This could go like this. The use of an omniscient narrator allows Rowling to describe the events that individual characters could not know in order to present multiple perspectives and create tension. For example, when Dumbledore first arrives at the Dursley's house, the family is unaware of it. So we as a reader know things that the individual characters do not know. And this creates sort of a tension. We know something goes, is going to happen, we just don't know how exactly. And we like to know more than the individual characters and feel sort of a superior in a way. Uh, because we follow Harry's thoughts, we understand his difficult position within the family and will identify with him. He wakes up in his cupboard under the stairs where he sleeps, which shows how cruelly he is treated. So Rowling uses the narrator here not only to show different perspectives, different things happening at different times, but also to often zoom in on the character of Harry and to let us know exactly what he's feeling, what he's thinking. Because of this, we identify with him. So, of course, this is now very short. This is not a complete analysis. But in this, with this system, I would construct a number of paragraphs to point out the things that you want to focus on. I hope I could help you with this video. Take a look around on my channel. There are a number of videos on how to do advanced tasks with English, like writing analyses of different aspects or analyzing a cartoon or whatever you like. Take a look and I hope to see you soon. Goodbye. English with Mr. B